So now let me move on to the questions. There have been a lot of questions here. Let, uh, let's uh, try to go over them and let's try to answer, right? Okay. So I'm going to be picking up. Um, okay, so, so first let, let me start. Um, okay, Rodney Taylor is asking, how do you take the GC log of an application? So Rodney, so question is, how do we capture the GC log? So Rodney, answer to your question is, uh, here, when you run this YC script, the script is going to take the GC log automatically. But in order to do that, you need to enable the GC log. You can enable the GC log by passing these JVM arguments. Let me show to you. This is all available in the ebook, which is shared to you. So, so uh, you, you need to pass this arguments to your JVM. Print GC details and print this GC, uh, give, the, uh, give this argument and give the file path where you want the GC log to be logged. If you're running in Java, this is the argument you want to pass if you're running on Java 8 or before, be, before versions. After Java 9, this is what you want to be passing. This is all, when you pass, automatically the garbage collection log information will be printed to the file. And friends, this one, will not add any, I will not say any, you cannot observe any noticeable overhead by enabling the GC logging. Because of uh, the job, what I do, I get to see very large deployments, JVM deployments in the world. And enabling a GC log is done in major deployments in all the JVMs in production because that's very negligible overhead, but it contains a very huge amount of wealthy information. And maybe um, we are planning to do this uh, webinar on a monthly basis. Maybe in one of the webinar, we'll dive deep dive into a GC analysis, right? So this is how you will enable the GC log. Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. Okay, so Rodney, uh, it's another question from Rodney. The 4% is across the data span, correct? Yes, yes, Rodney. This 4% that is a 56 minutes is across that duration period. It's not at, uh, it's not a 56 minutes is happening together. It is over a one day period or what, whatever the duration it was running, it is taken that and it's reported, right? So it, what I mean is the 56 minutes are not, that means applications are going to pause for 56 minutes together. This 56 minutes is spread all over the day. Okay. Okay. So now uh, let me keep going and let's uh, keep answer. Let's, uh, I'll answer the questions. Okay, so uh, Amitansu Acharya is asking, are we going to get this recording somewhere? No, the recording we are not sharing. It's just a live uh, uh, webinar. Okay. Is same questions here. It will be shared along. Yes, we will share the slides. We'll, uh, it, in fact, the slide will is already published. If you go to the blog.ycrash.io, the slide is already published there. Okay, so, and then Farooq is asking, thanks for, okay, the session recording, we're not going to share uh, Farooq because, uh, yeah, it's a live rec live session. So Kamal Asam is asking, you forgot to mention about thread address space. So Kamal, uh, that's a good point, what you're saying. So the what the Kamal is saying is, I didn't talk about this uh, five, the address space. So address space is of um, is where that thread is running. It is of uh, as a troubleshooter, as a JV engineer, uh, we don't need it. We don't need to focus on that much there, right? It's not of much use. Okay. So yes. So Kamal is asking, <laughs> is there is any way to capture a thread dump automatically upon detecting a slow application? Yes, Kamal. Answer is, un that's a very, very good question what you're asking. See, because if you see in this all these cases, someone has to capture the dump, which is a reactive way because I don't know when the slowdown is going to happen. But Kamal, there is a proactive way to do that. And uh, in Y crash, we do have a solution called micro matrix monitoring. So in that micro matrix monitoring, what we do is we look at 
when your application is slowing down and then we go ahead and capture the 360 degree data and then and and then it's automatic it's automatically done right there are still few more questions are there if there is enough interest i'll go into the details of that micro metrics monitoring how we can go about and capturing the 360 degree data that is if there is enough interest i'll talk about it okay uh, okay mm. Philippi says uh, about the garbage collection, the trash, Somraj says dead objects, yeah, very good. Anything that is un reusable, Sampath says that. And George says, you need to set up monitoring and alerting to threat attempts collecting and collecting via actuator. Yes, so George, this comes back to that micrometric monitoring. Let's see whether towards the end, after I answer the question, then enough time, I'll touch upon that briefly. So you don't have to do it, that, that there is an observer which can see whether the application is slowing down any issues, then it can automatically do the thread dump capturing. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ryan says another man's treasure. Unused, Suga says unused objects. Okay. Rodney says objects that not have any more reference. Anything which you are using earlier, but not now. Pratik says, okay. So Chaitanya says, First case study, for the first case, first case study, couldn't the high number of threats be due to external traffic which landed up having the similar stack trace? See, Chaitanya, it, it is a possibility. Yes, you can have high number of threads, right? Uh, but see, uh, when if there is high number of traffic, it, typically, the you, see, when the traffic is coming, the traffic is going to be distributed across your multiple transactions, right? You may have a sign-on request. You may have a payment, payment transfer request. You may have a a delete user, you have so many key transactions, so it's going to be distributed. But when there's a bottleneck, all threads have to gravitate with having the same stack trace. And then that is what is catching as the issue here. Okay, so there are a lot of very interesting definitions about uh, garbage collection, right? Uh, very good. Okay, how to analyze off heap out of memory issue? Shark talk. Sukla, very good question, very good question. So, Shartak, um, I wouldn't be able to go into the details of that, but there is a capability. For that, what you want to do is, it's called as a native memory tracking, that is NMT, native memory tracking. Um, so, the details about that, you can go to this blog.gcec, and here there's understanding the native memory tracking here. So, let me put that in the chat for you. Um, because of interest of time, we wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, so I'm just putting it in the chat here. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, so, okay, so next question is, isn't NGC without stop the world process? So Valerie is asking, so Valerie, no, that it's a misnormer in the industry. The, uh, friends, there's a very good question, what is Valerie asking? See, in the GC, there's an NGC and a full GC. NGC runs only on N generation. It is wrongly propagated and wrongly educated that the NGC does not stop your application, which is not true at all. Now, let me repeat, it is not true at all. NGCs do pause your application 100%. But it just since NGC runs on N generation, which is typically tend to be a smaller in size, the pause times are typically lesser. But it does pause, Valerie. Okay. So Kamal says, yes, 4% desire. What GC algorithm they are using? So Kamal, they, they were using parallel GC. Most article did not mention, yeah. Yes. So Kamal, yes, both of them do pass. NGC and full GCs, they do pass the application. Okay. Raja Raja Kaliyappan, he says, what state the application threads will be when the GC is in progress? So, Raja, very good question. Raja is asking, okay, when the GC is in progress, right, when the garbage collection is running, what is the state in which the thread is going to be? See, friends, I told the thread states are here, right? Um, 
the threat states are reported here. What, he's asking what threat state it's going to be. Very good question, Raja Raja Kaliyapan. Actually, it will be in the same state what it is. When the garbage collection run, it just all stops. The state will not change. If it's in a runnable state, it's executing something, it will remain in runnable. It will not change. Right? But our fast thread to the analysis has intelligence to see well, what are the threads which is stuck and then it can report it. We, we do this pattern recognitions and then we do the reporting. Okay. Okay, so Sanjay uh, Gopalani says, how do we know the end generation config needs to be changed or optimized? So, so Sanjay, that's a good question. See, what happens is, in we do give the recommendations, right? Here, uh, we do give the recommendations. In our recommendations, that is something we highlight. If you see, uh, generation needs to be changed, we report it. So this is one way for you to look at it. And then also, um, you, you want to do a little bit more practice uh, the GC tuning. You may want to get your hands dirty, look at, download some logs, look at it, right? So you may want to attend a master class, which may help you further. There's too many, Ganesh Padmanabhan is asking, is too many my, minor GCs also problematic? 100% Ganesh, 100% yes, okay. So Rodney, we answered your question earlier. Can we run Ycrash script in cube containers? Ganesh, yes, 100%, you can run it on the cube containers. So here uh, is our, the link on how to run in the Kubernetes containers. So let me put that in the chat, um, the question what you asked. Okay, Sandeep has already answered that, okay. Okay, so Raja Raja Kaliyapan asked, is there any way we can design the right heap size for my articulation, particularly how to distribute the Eden? Yeah. So Raja Raja Kaliyapan answer is yes, you can do that. What is the right heap size? See, sometimes when there's a over allocation of heap, right, then what you actually need, which is a very common case. A lot of us, friends, a lot of us, we, what are my heap size, XMX, we just take it for granted. Oh, that is the right number. No. When you do the GC tuning, you will know whether you're over allocated or under allocated. What we are seeing as a GC log parser, we are seeing so many of applications have over allocated the memory than what they need. So here, when that over allocation happens, then we report it. In the tool analysis, we report this memory is over allocated. Take a look at it, right? When you cut down the memory, think about, say, suppose you're running on a, I don't know, 32 gig uh, RAM EC2 instance. You're over allocated. What if you reduce it? You can run on much less easy to instance. What is the cost saving you can bring to your enterprise? It's going to be very phenomenal and very profound. That's why the Uber is manufacturing are able, are able to cut down the cost because of GC study. Okay. Um, so, Yes. So, is there a, any, okay, Raja, I think the rule of thumb, okay. Okay, Raghuram Balasubramanian asks, what is the recommended settings for any generation, old, old generation? What is the recommended size for initial heap size and maximum heap size? So, Raghuram, what is the recommended size for young and old is dependent on your application. What kind of transaction process and what does it do? And what is the recommended setting for initial heap size and maximum heap size? Max heap size, you, it's also once again depends on your application and what is the SLAs you want to meet. But if you, I would recommend whatever the max size you come, set the initial heap size to be the same value because there are a lot of some performance gains you're going to do by setting the initial heap size and the maximum heap size to be the same value. Here, I, I'll share with you a blog for you, Raghuram Balasubramanian so that you can look at it offline. There are some, there are a few benefits of setting both of them to be of same value. Well, I'm sharing that link with you in the chat. Okay. Um, okay, Adam, okay. So see Premanand, no, we are not doing any recording uh, Premanand, so it will not be shared. 
so so Ganesh, you're asking the why, why crash crypto on cube pods? Could you please share insights? So uh, Ganesh, I've shared the link below on how to go about setting it up. So if you have any questions, you are welcome to reach us. So Kamal is asking if correct L checks are implemented on the load balancers, H2 will not be an issue. See, uh, Kamal, here the the issue was happening at the engine X was not as happening it. Wouldn't follow the request. No, see, the engine X is following the Tomcat and Tomcat is not responding. Since Tomcat is not responding, Nginx is throwing back 502 errors, right? Okay. So Vignesh wouldn't ask, how do you find the end generation config needs to be changed? So do the, the upload a GC log and see whether it is recommended. Um, and then you want to see, see, I think, yes. And then you want to see, do the GC log analysis and then you need to see that, okay? So Ganesh, yes, um, you're running on a um, certain pods and you're saying, uh, should you do some G1, GC thing? 100%, I would recommend taking it up and looking it up to see how much time it is pausing, whether due to that, any availability is happening. T way, most likely when garbage collection pauses, that means your application is not going to respond. That means if any health checks comes during that time, it's going to fail, right? So you may want to take a look at it, okay. Okay, friends, I think... Uh, I've answered uh, most of the questions, right? So I think, uh, maybe I think, uh, yeah, so we are also on the top of the, which is five, six months away. So um, I think maybe we will wrap up this call, right? I think, uh, thank you everyone for uh, taking a valuable time to attend this. Um, so we will continue to do this webinar series on a monthly basis. And if you see any value, uh, please continue to join, right? And also if you want to have this kind of a private session for your enterprise, you're welcome to reach us as well, right? Okay, so thank you friends. Thank you everyone, right? Mm -hmm.